this is Pat. Today I am going to show you how to use Dapper. Dapper helps you access any database. Unlike Entity Framework, you have control over the SQL. Dapper will help to map the result set to your C-sharp classes. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at the database we are going to interact with. This database runs on my local machine. It's a SQL Server Express. The name of the database is BookDB. It has a single table named Books. If I run a select query on the Books table, you can see that there is only one record. In order to interact with the database, we are going to expose an API. I've already created the solution in Visual Studio. The project has a controller named Book Controller, a book model, which represents the book table, a repository to abstract access to the database. If I run this API, you can see the Swagger documentation with all the HTTP methods, the get, put, past, and delete. If I try the get books endpoint, I get a not implemented exception, which indicates that the method is not implemented. This error occurs in the book repository. Let's take a look. All the methods have not been implemented yet. We are going to implement this method using Dapper. Before that, we are going to query the data with the ADO.NET like in the whole days. Let's install the provider for SQL Server. Let's write the code to retrieve all the books. We first need to write the SQL statement. To retrieve all records from a table, we use the SELECT statement. Next, we need to create a connection to the database. We use the USING keyword to make sure that all resources will be closed when the code exits the USING block. The SQL connection constructor takes a connection string as an argument. Let's add a connection string to the application settings. This connection string is related to the SQL server which runs on my local machine. Let's go back to the book repository. We are going to create a private variable that will hold the connection string. To retrieve the connection string, we are going to inject an instance of the I configuration class so we can use the get connection string method. Now we need to create a new SQL command object. It takes the SQL query and the connection as argument. Next, we open a connection to the database using the method open on the connection object. The connection will be closed when the code will exit the using block. Once the connection is established, we use the method execute reader on the command to execute the query against the database. This returns a SQL data reader. We use this object to read records from the book table. The reader object has method like getInt, getStrings, that allow reading a column value depending on the type of data. The parameter is the index of the column in a row. The get method is now implemented. Let's run the application. If I try to get all the books, you can see in the response body that I get the one book we have in the database. Let's take a look at the code again. 
That's a lot of code just for retrieving records from a database. This task of mapping the response to our book object is easy in this case, but imagine if we need to map a more complex object. It will be difficult. That's where Dapper comes into play. It lets you control the SQL query, but helps you open a connection to a database and map the result to a strongly typed name. Let's remove all this code, and now we are going to use Dapper in order to get the books. First thing, we need to install the Dapper library. We use the query async method on the connection object. This is an extension that has been added by the library. The query async method takes the book type as the type parameter to indicate that the result will be mapped to a book object. We provide the SQL query as the argument. As you can see, the only thing we're still using is the SQL query and the connection object. Now let's run the project and try the get books endpoints. I get the results. Let me put a breakpoint to make sure the new code is it. Let's execute again and the code is it, so it works. Now let's implement the create books method. To insert a new record into the table, we use the SQL statement insert into. We specify the table and we need to specify the column's name in which we want to insert new data. We're not going to insert anything in the ID column because it's generated automatically. The next part of the query is where we specify the values. The values are set as parameter using the at character. This protects the query against SQL injection attacks. Next, we create a SQL connection. We use the method execute async on the connection object. The first argument is the SQL query. The second argument is an anonymous object which contains the value for all the parameters we set in the query. We return the book which has been inserted. Let's try to insert some books to see if it works. We don't need the ID property. We set the title, the author, and a description. If we execute this, we get a 201 response, which indicates that a resource has been created. Let's check the database to see if it is true. If I run the select method again, you can see I have a new book in the database. Let's insert another book. Let's execute the get books endpoint. Now I have three books in my collection. Now let's implement the method get book by ID. We use a select statement. To filter by ID, we need to use the WHERE clause. We set book ID as a parameter. Next, we create a connection. We are going to use the method query first or default async. This will map the result to a book object. And we provide the SQL query and an anonymous object that contains the value for the book ID parameter. Now let's try out. First, let's get an ID of an existing book. We execute the get book endpoint. We set the ID. If I execute, I get the book. Let's implement the update method. We use the SQL update statement to modify a book in the database. We provide the value for each column as parameters.
the where clause specifies which record we are going to update. So the ID is also set as a parameter. Next, we create a connection. We use the execute async method on the connection object. We pass the query as an argument and an anonymous object with all the values for the parameters in the query. Let's test our API. I copy an existing book. In the put endpoint, I set the ID in the query string. I update the description of the book. If I execute the endpoint, I get a no content result HTTP code. The put method succeed. Now let's execute the get books endpoint again. As you can see, the description has been updated. Let's implement the delete method. We use the SQL delete statement. In the where clause, we provide a parameter ID which specify which book to delete. We use the execute async method on the connection object and pass the SQL query and the ID in an anonymous object. Let's try to delete a book. First, we are going to get an ID of the book we want to delete. Once we have it, we can use it in the delete endpoint. The response tells that the book has been deleted. Let's display other books again. As you can see, now I only have two books in my database. This tutorial ends here. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.